Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 84. This week I'm going to be talking about weatherproofing the motion sensor for the camera axe. So one of the most common requests that I get for custom work outside of the open source camera axe community is to weatherproof various sensors or weatherproof the full camera axe. And uh, one of the more popular sensors for that kind of work uh, are things that can detect motion. I think this is because people are oftentimes outdoors and they want to detect uh, someone crossing the finish line. And I've done an enclosure that holds the camera axe and a motion sensor uh, for that in a past video. But uh, this time, the person wanted just the motion sensor enclosed and sort of this is what I came up with. Uh, the uh, enclosure here is, uh, I'll show you it open in a little bit, but it has a rubber gasket. It's completely uh, waterproof. Uh, this sensor is an ultrasonic sensor, so it emits sort of this cone of uh, sound. And then when something re is in the way, it reflects back off of that object. And this can tell you basically how many inches it is uh, from the device. Now I have one of these that's not weatherproof for the camera axe and uh, it uses a single uh, 3.5 millimeter jack sensor port on the camera axe and uh, an analog signal. So uh, this would support that but when I'm doing these higher uh, cost sensors people want more exact measurements back and uh, this sensor in here has a way of reporting back the exact distance uh, with a protocol called IC squared. So uh, basically that requires uh, both of the jacks on the camera axe. So these are two weatherproof um, 3.5 millimeter jacks and those would just plug in to the camera axe. So this is goes into the sensor one port and this goes into the sensor two port. And it's uh, you connect those two cables to the camera axe so here's a close-up of the sensor. I've already unscrewed the cap. So in there, on the inside, you can just see that it's pretty simple. There's these two uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks in their weatherproof housing that connect to this sensor. Uh, then I hot glued uh, around this sensor um, module just to keep these cables from uh, eventually sort of breaking loose. Uh, it's hard to see. In fact, I don't think you can see it, but there are two 1K resistors that I'm using as pull-up resistors on this module so that you don't need to modify the camera axe. And uh, that works, works quite well. Um, I have a schematic. I'll show you how those are actually wired into this uh, device uh, in a little bit. And there's the waterproof ultrasonic sensor. Um, here on the bottom there's a quarter inch aluminum plate that uh, is threaded with uh, quarter inch threads here. It's the same threads that a uh, standard tripod has so you can mount this to a tripod which seems to be the most convenient way to mount these sensors. Here I've already mentioned these are just uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks. Um, both of those will go to the camera axe. And that's pretty much it for this. Here's the schematic. Zoom in a little more. So I'll put a copy of the schematic in the uh, files on the show notes. Uh, but basically, I've just wired. These are the two import jacks, so these guys. And this is the sonar, that guy. And then on the inside, there's a bunch of pins on that sonar, which uh, hot glued over, but basically that's sort of this, this is breaking that out. And they're actually labeled uh, as I have them here. So the ground pin off of this sonar sensor goes to the base of this sensor one that that's for ground and then the tip of sensor one goes over to here for v plus so that's just five volts and that'll provide the voltage now inside the sensor i put these two 1k resistors 
uh, to act as a pull-up for the I squared C bus. And uh, so pin five, it's labeled in there. That's SCL for the I squared C, 1K pull-up. And uh, pin four, that's SDA, 1K pull-up. Uh, both of those are pulled high. Then these pin four and pin five are run to uh, the sensor two, uh, which actually connect to pins in the uh, camera acts, which can understand uh, the I squared C protocol. So uh, that's uh, pretty much it for the schematics. So there's basically just those four pins that you're wiring and, and these other pins are all on there, but we don't need them for uh, this uh, set up so I, I didn't so I just left those unconnected so now the software that comes with the camera X won't have this max sonar menu but uh, I wrote this software for the finish line trigger and the exact same software will work with this sensor as well so I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well in case people uh, want to make sure that they can upload this software to their camera X which is a very easy process um, so basically this first number is the distance uh, away that you want uh, before the sonar triggers. So in this case, uh, I have it set to not trigger if um, something's further than 16 feet. Um, in this case, this number here that changes every once in a while, uh, right now it's a three, uh, that's the distance to the object that it's detecting. So if I take the sonar and point it somewhere else in the room, over there there's nothing, so it detects nothing. And if I put my hand right in front of it, you can see it drops down to zero. So that's basically detecting the distance. Uh, it's programmed in feet right now, but um, that's pretty easy to change if you look at the software, which is all open source. Uh, delays for your camera, usually that's gonna be zero. Uh, low latency that basically sets the camera's uh, auto focus on continuously and usually your camera is going to be in in manual focus mode uh, so this just sort of keeps your camera in a high energy state so it, it keeps your camera with its lowest shutter lag possible um, and then I have camera 2 settings and the time between shots in milliseconds so this menu is very simple to use Usually the only number I'm actually changing is this, and um, that's pretty much it for the software. So just out of curiosity, I started taking some of these pictures of birds with this sensor. It's a very taxing task to, to photograph birds in flight uh, because they're moving really fast and your camera has a bunch of shutter lag built into it, but uh, I sort of set it up for a you know, a couple hours and I got a, a few decent pictures out of it. I will say that I watched it for a little while and it was missing a fair number of birds. In general, this sensor is best for larger objects. The people who typically use this are using it for detecting people crossing a finish line um, or larger uh, mammals and things. Birds, kind of tricky, but it does work, uh, as you can see. And... Uh, really uh, quite happy with how this sensor turned out. Thanks for watching.